Amen. Great to see everybody with us this morning and great to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I do want to, uh, as we're getting ready to get started, I want to get into God's Word. I want you to turn to the book of John in chapter 2 and verse 12. And I want to read a couple of verses from there. And as y'all get in there, we also have the, uh, the scripture here on the screen. I want, if you would, to please be in prayer for this nation of ours. We in a, we're in a turmoil, a chaos. And I strictly believe that the only cure for this nation is going to be in a Savior by the name of Jesus. I want you to pray for President Trump. He was shot yesterday. I also want you to be in prayer for the administration that's presently in office. And pray for the spiritual condition of this nation. I'm not going to get on this too much. Maybe two minutes. But I just feel in my spirit. And I felt this from some weeks ago. I can't quite put my finger on it. I was shared this, I think, maybe one time here. But I said, I, there's just something happening in the spiritual realm. I don't, can't put my finger on it. Uh, but something is taking place. I can't tell you whether it would be positive or negative in a sense to say it's good news. I don't know. But I just sense that something is stirring in the waters. But I will say this, you can bet this, that whatever God is doing, He's doing it with the intentions to bring a nation, to bring a people back to Him. Amen. I want you, if you would, to please be in prayer about that. Be in prayer. Lift up President Trump and this administration, this nation, that we're in, I somehow or another, I just see some turmoil, some very disturbing waves that's ahead of us. I want you to also mark this on your calendar, that the month of July, God had pricked in my spirit before last Sunday about doing something. And I feel an urgency. And we've called this month of July, we have called a month of prayer. And Sunday nights, as we're going to assemble here, we will have some worship and we will have prayer. We're going to be praying specifically for this ministry, for God's vision, for God's direction. So if you're here and you're a part of this ministry, I encourage you, if you would, be here this afternoon. This will be every Sunday afternoon when service starts at 5 o'clock. In the book of John, in chapter 2, in verse 12, I just feel something in my spirit that's stirred inside of me this morning. And I want to tell you this. I thought it was ironic because this is something that you just don't get every day. Uh, I call my front porch, that's my prayer room. I go out there every morning, and some of y'all see some of the pictures I post of the deers and the squirrels that's running around. I, Go out there sometimes around daybreak in the morning. I tell people, so you can call me at night and wake me up, but you can't call me in the morning and wake me up. Most of the time I'm already up, and I like to go out there and sit on the porch about the, the breaking of day and sit there and I get my word down. And I begin to read and study into it. And yesterday afternoon, I really had thought Thursday that God had had something that we stirred inside of my spirit about today, and I was back in the life of Jacob and Joseph and spent two or three days Monday, I mean th Wednesday night when I got home and Thursday and Friday looking and studying into this and yesterday I just felt something different. And I'm sitting on my front porch last night as the sun is going down, it's getting darkened and one of my buddies from Kentucky had called me. He says, I called you earlier today. He says, me and my mama was out shopping at Rural King, I think that's equivalent to what we have here as Tractor Supply. 
And he says, we went in the store. My mama asked me a question. She says, is there some kind of connection? Have you ever heard of there be some kind of connection between the Holy Spirit and the dove? So he called me and wanted to ask me a question. I said, of all the questions that he was to ask, I've never been asked this question. I said, as a matter of fact, yes, there is. I says, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the Jordan River, I said, and it said, and the Spirit descended upon him as a dove. I said, of all the questions a man could have asked me, and I want to speak to you today, that it's time to set the dove free. In the book of John in chapter 2, Verse 12, after this, he went down to Capernaum. This is speaking of Jesus. He, his mother and his brethren, as his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen, those that sold sheep, and those that sold and doves. And the changers of the money set him. These were guys that were, this is going to just take, be taking place. And the reason these oxen, the reason these sheep, and the reason these doves were there, that some people had to make a long journey to get to Jerusalem here uh, to celebrate the Passover. And in doing so, the long journey, they had found out that we can exchange our currency inside the temple. And there will, all, there will be some oxen, and there will be some sheep, and there will be some dove that we can purchase inside the temple for our sacrifice without having to bring it all with us. And so this just lays it out. And when Jesus saw this, they, these people, these money exchangers were taking advantage of the people that had made long trips, the ones that didn't have a lot of money. They was charging them double for the things that they was going through, for the sacrifice that they'd been needing. You can probably already see the picture that they had done took a chance to um, take over the and manipulate the people that is coming in by charging them a certain price for something that was way over the price that they normally had changed, taking uh, opportunity there. And when Jesus came in, he seen all of this, and when he had made a scourge, a small cord, he drove all them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen, and poured all the changers of money and overthrew the tables. And you remember this because somebody had asked the question, what would Jesus do? Well, overturning tables is not out of the question. And he said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Father, I thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to come and to declare your word this morning. I thank you, Lord, for this congregation that is here, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that has drawn them out, Lord, to hear the preaching of your word. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, today, may the Spirit of God move in a mighty way. Lord, we did not come with enticing words of man's wisdom, Lord, but in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And, and God, we cry out to you behind this pulpit here this morning, this sacred place, and this pastor here, this ministry. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I cry unto you, Lord, today. Pour out your spirit upon us, Lord. Move in a mighty way here this morning. Pray for this nation, Lord. For the leaders, Lord. We lift them up unto you. May the Spirit of God move mightily, Lord, upon the leaders of our nation. Have your way in this service this morning. Let your anointing rest upon us, Lord, like a heavy mantle, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Sunday night I had made mention from the book of Psalms in chapter 85. When he began to write here, Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee. Probably one of the topics and one of the subjects that you hear so much about if you enter into our church buildings. I want to say, whether it be here or wherever you go, there is a cry across the land, revive us again. 
I would think that if that is not the cry, it needs to be the cry of the house of God, the very redeemed of the Lord. Revive me again. That there me, that I, that thou people may rejoice in thee. Reviving is something that has been dead or at the point of death that has been brought back to life. I want to say this this morning. There is only one thing that can revive you. It is not the songs that we sing. It is not the dance that we dance. It's not the hands that we raise. There are good things to do. But there's not but one thing that can revive us. And that be the very Holy Spirit. The very power of God moving in our life. May there be a cry from the individual's heart as well as the church collectively. Lord, revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee. If there is to be a reviving of this nation there also must be a repentance towards Jesus Christ. I'm talking about a heart that is being turned back to him where he becomes the most important factor of our life. He becomes the most important thing of our life. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I'm talking to the church that our heart be turned back unto him. That he is the one that sits upon the throne of our lives. That he is the one that we exalt. That he is the one that when we go to bed at night that we have a desire to meet with in the morning. And just praying when you go to bed, God speak to me tonight when dreams and vision stir me up Lord Lord I want to be closer to you Lord let that spirit begin to move inside of us if there is to be a revival you would think or at least I would think it would come through this spirit filled vessel called the church I made mention the other night he talks to the church he says judgment must first come to the house of God. I'd also like to say revival starts right here in this house. It's not with a preacher. It's not with a song. It's with people coming in that has a desire being stirred by the Holy Spirit. God, we need you. You want to see a church experience revival? Just let the congregation catch a fire and you will see revival. Every time we begin to look around, Lord, Lord, send revival to my church. We must be, we must first start with ourselves. Lord, revive me. Let there be a fire that burns in the inside of me. Lord, may I be like old Jeremiah and may this be my song. May this be my phrase. Lord, I feel like your word is shut up inside of me like fire shut up inside of my bones. My Lord, if there's ever a time we're living at this time in this place in this age. There, here is a problem that we have. We have fallen so low that Jesus is not the driving force behind our worship. Y'all stay with me here. We've fallen so low that Jesus is no longer the driving force behind our worship. Listen, I've been at churches where we would sing songs about the blood, where we would sing songs about Jesus, and I thought they need to go down to the local high school and try to get their cheerleading squad to come and pep our people up, uh, to let them. I said, what in the world is going wrong? What in the world is going on when you're in the house of God singing songs about Jesus, the Redeemer, the Lord, the one that's raised me from dead to life? What in the world is going on when we sit around, can't lift our hands, can't lift our voice, Maybe I'll cry, Lord, revive me again, O Lord, that there may be joy among thy people. There must be. He's no longer the driving force behind our worship. Our worship is mostly determined by our time. Oh, hang on with me. I don't have anything else planned. Did I have a good week? How do I feel? The majority of our worship is not a priority. Stay with me here this morning. I'm speaking a word to the church. It was a, our worship now is a decision based on other priorities. That simply wasn't demanding our time at this present time. Oh my. Am I in the right house? Just hang on here. 
I've heard it more than once. The on the re- I'm coming to worship today because I had nothing else to do. In other words, what you were saying, that Jesus Christ was not the main priority. You just happened to come because some other priorities had been moved out of the way or had been canceled that day and you had nothing else less to, left to do and you came. This takes place inside of our churches all across this nation. And we're sitting here crying. The church is crying for revival. My Lord, our cry needs to be, Lord, revive me again. Let me say this. You can't worship someone that does not have top, top priority in your life. You can attend where worship is happening, but it's always going to be difficult to worship when something else has priority in your life. You will sit in church service and think about what you could be doing besides being in here, besides lifting your voice, besides praising the Lord. I wish I'd have went to the lake today. I wish I'd have went mud riding today. I wish I'd have rode horses today. I wish I'd have done I had something else planned. I want to tell you, when Jesus Christ becomes the leading and sitting upon the throne, of your life all of these other things will not matter they'll be pushed to the side and I'm telling you when you come in you won't need nobody to pep you up prime you up push you up I'm telling you it'll just start to flow out of your mouth Jesus Christ is my Lord he's my Savior he's my Redeemer my 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 revive me again oh Lord that there may be joy in this house that there may be joy in this land Lord, I'm stirred inside of my spirit. Revival does not happen without the Holy Spirit. Hang with me this morning. I won't hold you much longer. The revival does not happen without the Holy Spirit. Let me say it one more time. Revival does not happen without the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot bypass God and expect for revival and expect for your life to be on fire. My, my, my. It's the Spirit that gives life. It's He that quickens us and puts life in us. It's He that empowers us. It's He that guides us. It's He that teaches us. It's He that has drawn me. My, my, my. I'm going somewhere, so hang on here with me. It's the Holy Spirit that can only raise a spiritual dead man to life. And it happened when your response was to the conviction of the Holy Spirit as he points to Jesus and his death and resurrection and he, Jesus, being the means of our atonement for sin. This is what the Holy Spirit has done. He's turned your face to a Savior, the death and resurrection, and pointed to him that he is Savior, he is Lord, and it's upon your response unto that. Life come. I'm telling you, Day, the Holy Spirit has come to give us life. I said this before, I'm gonna say it again this morning. I don't know if it's on our sign. I don't know if we ever have something put out there. But I want to tell you when you begin to label yourself as a spirit-filled believer, as a spirit-filled church, there ought to be people that walk in. You don't have to have a sign up. They just know when they come into the house of God, I feel his presence. I feel his power. I feel his peace. To walk around, there's no such thing as a spirit-filled dead church. You're either spirit-filled or you're dead, but you can't be bold. Wherever the Spirit of God's blowing out, it brings life. My, my. Whoo. I feel like shouting today. Man, somebody said, I thought you was. I'm just getting wound up a little bit. Oh, there's something that stirs on the inside of me. There's a hunger and thirst that drives on the inside. He said that they that hunger and thirst shall. He didn't say you might. He didn't say that there would be a probability to it. He said you shall be filled. May there be a hunger and thirst for myself. May there be a hunger and thirst from the church collectively. Lord, fill us. Pour out your spirit upon us. My, my, my. Revival does not happen 
Only the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the link to bring me and you into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, no man can come unto the Father unless he draw you. Are you with me this morning? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to carry you back just for a second. And I'm going to go back to where I started at this morning. When I read the story about Jesus going inside of the temple. May the Spirit be loosed. My, my, my. I said, may the Spirit be loosed. May the Spirit. Let me go to this side. I got Brother Glenn. May the Spirit of God be loosed among us. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us. Pour it out upon us, Lord. Lord, I hunger and thirst for you. I wish there would be a church that would rise up and says, I'm tired of programs. I'm tired of churchy church. I'm tired of coming and going the same way, leaving the same way I came in. I want an authentic relationship with an almighty God. I want me an experience with the Holy Ghost that turns my life upside down. God, I hunger and I thirst for you. I don't want to come to a church where we sing three songs, uh, the preacher preaches 15 minutes, uh, and he tells you, oh, go on home. No, 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 no. I want the power of God to be poured out upon us. I have found out uh, that the power of God is the only thing that can change lives. My, my, my. I want to go back to this. The book of John chapter 2. I just want to say it like this. The dove has been locked in the cage for too long. When I began to read the picture of this, I began to see an image. As the ones that were selling the merchandise had taken the doves and put them inside of a cage. Whether they had them in a cage or whether they had them out, they was not free-ranging doves. They had them contained by some measure. Oh my, it's hard for a man to catch a dove when it's set loose. It's hard for my, it's hard for a man to control a dove when he's set loose. Lord help me, let that grab get right down inside of your spirit. It's hard for you to contain a dove. The only way you can is to put him inside of a cage or to tie him up. As long as the dove is in the cage, it cannot fly, and it's very limited to movement. The reason the dove was placed in the cage was a result of the temple, the place of worship, becoming a house of merchandise. Whoo! Stay with me here. Y'all with me? The house of God became a house of merchandise and now we find the dove is shut up. Chained up. Locked up. My, my, my. Lord help me here. I don't mean to go here but I don't know where this is going. But I ain't going to chase a rabbit with one trail. My daddy told me a long time ago, he said, Stacy, son, you'd be a good preacher if you quit chasing rabbits. So I've tried to break myself from that. To think that you can buy a dove, you already out of bounds. There was a guy that one time in the book of Acts, Simon the sorcerer, when he seen the power of God moving and the Holy Spirit moving, he said, I want to give money for that. Can I tell you something this morning? The Holy Spirit is not for sale. He does not come by the means of money. He comes by the means of a hunger and a thirst of the blood of Jesus Christ and Him alone. The reason the dove was placed in the cage was a result of the temple becoming a place of merchandise. I'm fixing to make it real. Stay with me if you ain't heard nothing else I said. I'm fixing to connect this. I'm fixing to translate this into our modern terminology of this culture that we have today. Churchy church. I'm going to use that word. Maybe you'll remember it. Has become the merchandise. 
I said church at church. Somebody said explain this. What are you talking about? Just simply going through the churchy stuff. Mm. Trying to re- appease the religious conscience. But not affecting our lives. Mm. Oh my my. I wanted to come to the churchy stuff. But make sure that the dove stays in the cage. My, my, my. You ain't with me this morning. We, we didn't expect all of this. No anointing, no movement of the Holy Spirit, no power, just churchy stuff is what I come for. This is what I'm here for. There's a vast majority of churches filled across this land that people come just for the churchy stuff long as the dove is locked in the cage. I hope I'm connecting this morning. We don't want to be stirred up. We don't want to be challenged. We dare to get close to somebody that we think may have, may be full of the Holy Ghost. Lord, it may get on me. I got you. It ain't going to get on you if you don't want it. (laughs) Hello, somebody. (laughs) Just hangs. Lord, shut him up in a cage. I've experienced this. When the church itself becomes the merchandise, the churchy church, was the day the dove was locked up in exchange for entertainment, for self-pleasure, for non-conviction services. The problem is, is when you commercialize the church, the customer now starts to control what you're selling. My, my, my. If anybody's in business for themselves this morning, you got a product. You know what you're trying to do? You're trying to sell it. And really you're trying to reach a customer. And the customer has a big influence in your life of the way you present this. Maybe I need to change something to draw my customer. That's fine if you're in business for yourself and you're selling a product besides Christ. You ain't with me this morning. But somehow or another the church has been put on the auction block. It has commercialized itself. And the problem with that is now we're trying to attract the world. And doing that we got to change the product. I'm fixing to tell you something that's real this morning. Oh my, no, hang on with me. Sugar coating. Now you know why everything has to be sugar coated because the customer, the consumer, desires sugar. You've heard this phrase. You've heard it so many times from preachers. You've heard congregation. They just like to sugar coat things. This is how cereal became so popular. Nobody to wanted to eat no pup corn that was pressed into a flake. And the people that were the inventors of that didn't take them long to find out nobody wants our product the way we have presented it. But one of the guys that was sitting on the board said, let's add sugar to it. I know it don't taste good, but if we can add sugar to the corn flake and have frosted flakes, all of a sudden this product begin to go nationwide. People have a hunger and thirst for it. The problem is it's no good for you. Ain't nobody with me this morning. My, my, my. The commercialization of the church. Stay with me here. Stay with me. The commercialization of the church. Now let's find ourselves sugarcoating everything. Let me carry you all the way back. Y'all still with me? Let me carry you all the way back. Let me carry you back to an old Pentecostal church where there ain't but 25 people in it. People just worship different. 25 of us sitting out there in an old block building didn't have a care in the world. Just a hunger and thirst. You've seen it time and time again. Time and time again. Lord, the Spirit of God get to moving. People get to dancing. People get to running. People get to shouting. They weren't thinking about what everybody else thought. I just came to worship the Lord. Lord, if God pouring out His Spirit upon them, God moving in a mighty way, all of a sudden people begin to hear rumors. What's going on down there, out out there in the country, in that little old block building with that orange carpet? What is going on? I want to go out there and get in amongst it. All of a sudden, boy, people begin to come. People coming from here and far. Spirit of God 
just moving. All of a sudden, some people come in and say, I don't like this. I, I don't like the way they conduct this. All of a sudden, now some people inside of the church has experienced what it's like now to have a bigger congregation and when the offering, I'm, I'm just being real, and the offering plate goes around and now it becomes larger and larger. Pastor, we need to meet with you. You need to try to contain, put the dove up to a certain time because you're offending some of the people that's coming in. Can I tell you what's happening today? We have merchandise that we have come and merchandise what the product and which we're selling and we've shut the dove up. My, my, my. Pastor, you don't need to get so rowdy. I've been told all of my life, you preach too loud, you sugarcoat nothing. Nobody wants to hear this. I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not preaching to everybody. I'm just coming to tell you what the Word of God says. Lord, fill us up, Lord. My, my, my. I'm not here selling frosted flakes. We're here declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is live. He's come to give you life. My, 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 my. Let the dove out of the cage. Woo. My, my, my. Woo, I feel something stirring on the inside of me. My, my, my. Oh. There come a time that we take the bottle off of the oil and just pour it all out. My, my, my. You may be seated just for a few more minutes. It's time to let the dove loose. Let there be a cry from the house of God that is saying, take the top off and pour the oil out upon us. My, my, my. The congregation and church leaders have determined to keep the dove in the cage and yet cry out at the same time, revive us again. You can't expect revival or great awakening when you have grieved the one who brings it. My, my, my. May the power of God move in this house. May some men and women be set free. Done good worshiping when there was 25. But all of a sudden when more people show up, they start to control the atmosphere. I can't take my coat off. I can't let my hair down today. I pray that there will come a day and a time that the people just let their hair down, take their coat off and says, I don't care what nobody else is doing around me like the woman with the alabaster box. I, I didn't come here to worship because of you. I didn't come here to impress you with my worship. I come to bring my alabaster box. I, I didn't come to take the top off. I came to break the jar. While I'm here, I'm leaving it all on the table today. Ma, ma, ma. The power of the Holy Spirit. Loosing. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Help me here just one second. I'm going to close. The Holy Spirit in the unbeliever's life come to reprove you of sin, of righteousness and judgment. This is what he does. Spirit of God, grab a hold to your life. I, I, it's amazing how the Spirit of God works. Because there will be some people that come up to me after this service today. And they'll say, Pastor, that message just hit me right in the heart. And they'll tell me everything but what I preached on. It won't even be close. And I'm thinking to myself, God started dealing with them way before they ever got here. They ain't heard a word I said. The Holy Ghost just moving in their life. Had their undivided attention just moving. Starting to bring thoughts and memory back up. Started to deal with them spiritually. Came to, he's moving in some of your life right now. He's grabbing a hold to you. What is this, Pastor? It's the power of God that's moving in your life. It's the unction that's crying for you to come unto me. All you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My, my. You have the option today. You have a choice. You have a choice to lock down. 
You have a cho cho choice to ignore. You have a choice to grieve the Holy Spirit. But doing this, you're refusing the very life of God. Don't you leave out of here crying for God to revive you when the Holy Spirit was auctioning you. Move, I want to revive you. Yes. Believers, for the Holy Spirit to have moved upon you, prompted you. Some of you here this morning. Oh, you know what your calling is. You know what God's dealing with you about. He's stirring on the inside of you. Hey, I'm needing you to make a choice. I'm needing you to sell out to me. I'm needing you to get in with both feet. You're sitting there. The Holy Spirit is moving. Say, I want to do great and mighty things in your life. I want to stir your life up. I want to turn your life upside down. And all of a sudden now, we have ignored this. We have went to a lockdown. Of the Holy Spirit moving in your life. And we have grown. Read him. My, my, my. Loose him. And let him go. I want you to stand your feet this morning. We're fixing to go back into worship today.